Yandere Dev is one of the most degenerate and controversial game developers in history. There are hundreds of videos about him on YouTube, including some that I've made, like my video, Yandere Dev is Embarrassing. But what a lot of you may not know is that Yandere Dev actually has a really degenerate past, stretching back almost 15 years, and it's all been documented in a video by Jormi49. So, the other day with my stream, we decided to check out Jormi's video, which was great by the way, you should check out his channel, and uh, we just wanted to figure out just how bad Yandere Dev's past is. Turns out it's pretty freaking gross. Obviously, you guys know I've been following the Yandere Dev story a little bit more loosely than some people, but I remember when the allegations came out, I made this video called Yandere Dev is Embarrassing, where I just went over all the weird stuff that happened with, uh, basically he was having some very inappropriate messages with a young fan. I believe she was 16 and I believe he was 30, in his 30s, he was in his 30s. But then he made a response and I responded to the response. I didn't think it was very good. He sort of tried to come out and be like, yeah, I mean, you know, some of the DMs were wrong, but it wasn't grooming. And then when you actually look at some of the DMs, they're much worse than he let on in his response video. They were really gross. And I think he deserves to get a lot more than he got for it. But now, Jeremy49 has done a whole 55 minute long video going over all the Andre Def stuff. And I'm curious to see how deep this rabbit hole goes. One fateful day, nearly 10 years ago, in the deepest, dankest corners of the internet, and by that, I mean 4chan's video game board, a post would be made asking if the board users would be interested in playing something the poster termed a quote, Yandere Simulator, a game where you play as an anime girl so obsessed with her love interest, Senpai, that she goes on a quest in order to surreptitiously kill all of his potential girlfriends without revealing to him her psychopathic nature. We're only ones that consider this script, and I'm already getting flashbacks to my last video. This post, which initially seemed innocuous, would eventually trigger a series of events resulting in a never-ending whirlwind of false promises, cringe, and disgusting allegations, as well as lead directly to the unearthing of the creator's disgusting internet behavior going back more than a decade. So buckle up, my 49ers because we're about to go in deep, deeper than we've ever gone before, deep into a story absolutely chock-full of the delicious and nutritious cringe, memes, and degeneracy that my 49ers so love to gorge themselves on. This is the tale of the horrific and painfully slow decline of Alex Mann, the Yandere developer. But before we truly get into this video, it's time for a classic Jormai 49 disclaimer. As many of you may have noticed from what I said in that introduction, or from anything you may have seen online about Yandere Dev in the past few months, he's been accused of some very serious things, and some people may find descriptions of them disturbing. I won't be going in- I think- I think we'll be just fine with those descriptions. Two decades of unhinged and ridiculous behavior that led Alex Mann to become My one of the internet's dishes. most notorious and controversial figures. Are you going on a date with Summer anytime soon? I'm never going on a date with Summer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I uh, I value my mental health just a little bit. Uh, enough that I'm not going to do that. Ever dealt with people wanting to collab for clout? I have friends I want to collab with who are bigger but don't want them to feel like they're being used. Well, I mean, just if you're actually their friend, I feel like it shouldn't be that big of an issue. I mean, to an extent, you are using them a little bit if they're if they're way more popular than you. Obviously, you might get something out of that, but yeah. I mean, if my, if someone who's my genuine friend wants to collab, I probably won't have a problem doing it with them, even if it doesn't necessarily benefit me in the short term. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but you know, obviously, there are random people with like one subscriber who email me who email me asking for a collab, and I just don't really respond to that. I don't know. Just you know, suss it out. Use your interpersonal communication skills. Big boy stuff, I know. Video on Matthew Fowler when I don't even know who Matthew Fowler is. English convicted serial sex offender and blackmailer from a period of time between 2009 and 2017, he coerces victims online into sending him degrading images of themselves or into committing crimes against a third person for assault. Jesus. Sounds like an interesting topic, actually. I've never even heard of this guy. Sadistic Matthew Fowler jailed for 32 years. Ugh, it's going on the list. Good suggestion. Hopefully we can get that video monetized so we can make some money off of this person. Why do you tone shift so hard when interviewing her? Well, I tried to get some basic answers out of her. I knew that if I was just confrontational, there wouldn't be much of a response. She would either cry and leave or just leave. And I didn't really want that to happen. What I tried to get out of it was some kind of answer where I acted polite and I would just get some like actually answers about whatever was going on. But it seems like I didn't get anything. I actually did a little cursory search for police reports uh, regarding Sam Hyde or anything uh, from her because she claimed that something bad happened in the house or something. I couldn't find any police report regarding him. Um, so I don't really know what's up with that. Uh, but yeah, you just can't, uh, you just can't get in there. You can't get in there. Obviously she's cute, but she could ruin your life, bro. Be careful. 
You going to do any more deep dives into stand-up comics? Yeah, I probably will. She lied. Yeah, I mean, it seems she might have lied. I can't tell. I can't completely tell yet, but maybe there's something I'm missing somehow. Maybe Sam wasn't in the police report and it was someone else, but I tried to look and uh, I couldn't find it. Couldn't find any police report in Providence or in Rhode Island for that for that fact, even closely uh, like like related at all, you know? I'm curious if her life's going to get better or worse if like if she continues having more mental breakdowns and stuff. Probably do a video about it eventually, just going over all of it, but for now it seems like she's leaving and chilling out. If you're wondering, Dev Cat Scratch wants adult dolls made of underage Nickelodeon characters, uses his tism as a crux, thinks the WWF is a terrorist organization and has made bomb threats to airlines. Sounds like a cool guy. <laughs> Sounds like a really cool guy. Looking forward to the video, I guess, if I do it. The format of this video is something I debated for a while, simply because there's just so much to cover. What I ultimately decided is that I would chronicle the overall plotline of our lascivious villain's online life in chronological Everybody tells me I look like this guy, dude. When each thing Second video in a row we watched from Jormy where apparently I look like the guy. I mean, I look a little like him when I shave. Yes, I see it, but not that, not that much, okay? Stop, stop with the bullying. Stop with the bullying, okay? It's hurting my feelings. ...about him was discovered. This means I'll be starting long before Alex was- She should have never won on that show. She's insane. Yeah, obviously. ...known as Yandere Deb because, well, there was no Yandere to be the dev of. Because of this though, I figured I would provide this background section to introduce the situation as a whole and tell you why you should even care about this crazy plotline more wacky than any Marvel villain's backstory. See, Yandere Simulator, the game Yandere Dev is obviously famous for, was at one point certainly one of the internet's most anticipated video game releases ever. I don't think I can overstate the hype this game had behind it after it managed to worm its way into the mainstream. The demo build was played by YouTube golden boys like Markiplier, PewDiePie, and Jacksepticeye. There's a segment of a vid I did on my main channel about Gypsy Crusader. Thanks for the five. It's uh, Real Life Criminals Inspired by the Joker. I talk about him there. Whose young and impressionable fan bases immediately started chomping at the <coughs> Alex Mann bit for more. Just to put the YouTube cultural zeitgeist of this era more into perspective for you, my dear Jormai 49ers, this was the same year that Five Nights at Freddy's was released. Okay, what about, what about Yandere Dev is so... Or Yandere Sim, rather. What about Yandere Sim is so appealing to people? Like, I've never... I've never gotten this fascination with, like, Japanese schoolgirls. I've, I've just... I've never really gotten why why this is so good to people. I guess the game looks kind of cool. I kind of like the, like the, the, the visual style. I don't really like the anime art that much, but... I like the thick lines um, on everything. It looks, you know, cartoony and cute and cool, but... I don't really get this fascination with this particular uh, thing visually or just conceptually, you know. Um, I feel like there's probably a lot of other cool stuff. I like Japanese car culture, but that's it. Well, that has nothing to do with this. It's a good concept. Well, is it a good concept because it's about like murdering people as zaced? Is an anime girl killing and being crazy? It's funny. I guess that is kind of funny. I don't know. It just doesn't seem that super captivating to me. I'd rather be a man killing people in a video game. It's like Hitman for weeaboos. Gotcha. What it is, if you don't know what it is, basically you put somebody inside, close the doors, and these spikes just all stab you all at once. It's the Iron so Maiden. we're gonna try it. But I need Matthew was the founder of one of the worst sites in the deep web, Hurt Core. Nobody really knows about the topics. He'd be kind of the icebreaker. Has nobody really done a video about this guy? Is this real? But yeah, I just I just don't get why this is so. It doesn't look garbage. It's just like I kind of find it uninteresting. Maybe I just don't care about anime enough at all to like this. A lot of people want me to like anime a lot, and I just I have a hard time watching it. <laughs> Even watching, like, the other day I was watching uh, the animated Scott Pilgrim show, and it's not really anime, but um, I don't know. I have a hard time with cartoons. They have to be really good and really uncringe for me to like it. And then immediately erupted into fame, very similarly catapulted by our YouTube darlings, whose playthroughs achieved similar views to their Yandere simulated playthroughs. So, in the same year alone, we had two dark indie games made by single-person development teams, launched into the mainstream spotlight by content creators, and immediately given a free shot at a guaranteed audience for their game. And now, in the present day, we have one largely forgotten developer whose legacy will more likely than not consist of an endless stream of grievances and allegations, and we have one billion dollar franchise consisting of 10 plus games, multiple book series, and a freaking Hollywood movie. Obviously, that comparison isn't entirely fair. I understand that it's probably easier to- They definitely could have- The thing is, like, with the, from what I understand with the hype around this game at the time, it definitely could have been, like, that big, right? It definitely could have been as big as Five Nights at Freddy's if people let it. I mean, I don't, I don't really like anime, but, like, 
this game, which was like, is still to this day, never completed, still has an audience 10 years later. You know, there's clearly something that uh, cringe, degenerate weeaboos really like about it, like really, really like about it. So I just, I just don't see a reason why it's, why he managed to squander this opportunity so poorly. Is he just unmotivated? Does he not, does he need to hire more people? Like what, what is the problem with the development of this game? Why is it so abysmal? How does it take in 10 years? I feel like if you're actually working at something and getting it done, it should not take 10 years for a game. I mean, it's not the simplest game in the world, but it's also not the most complex one, right? It's not in Skyrim. Isn't it all inside of a high school? I feel like you should have completed it years ago. Why is he so incompetent? I remember watching this video from this guy called Kappa Kaiju a while ago, uh, like years ago, um, where he basically said that he's never going to finish it because he's like a horrible programmer. Yeah, this video. That, that made in a different language. And it has good English. Better English than Yandro Simulator. The competition is destroying him. In 2015 and 2016, Yandro Simulator was in contest with other indie games and it was lagging behind. It's 2020 now. Yandro Simulator is no longer in the competition. It barely had anything of worth four years ago. It has nothing left now. It barely just stopped having to share its core idea with another game, a fan game, actually, which had to shut down development. And this video has 6 million views. This video all over Yandere Simulator saying it's never going to be done. On a channel with 300k has 6 million views. That is so many views on this game. And there's been this culture of on, on, on Yandere Dev for a long time as well. I feel like I see this stupid face in every meme. <laughs> every meme. I think the Copypasta subreddit, the, the icon of it, is literally his face. SSO over 10 says, you look like a young Nick Rochefort. You, you also got to get a 90s stick shift Japanese car someday. I, okay, I'm going to be honest. I kind of don't care for, like, Japanese cars. I mean, I guess I like Lexuses, but that's kind of it. Um, but I, I probably would not get that 90s to oh stick shift Japanese car. I also don't know how to drive stick. If I got a 2000s car, it would be like a... Uh, uh, yeah, it would probably be... Maybe even older. I know they're complete pieces of shit, but if I had the money to just get it and maintain it, I totally would. Because they're pretty swag. The old S4s are just... They're just too good, dude. They're too nasty. The styling is so much better, too. They just got it right. Yeah, I think this one is not 2005. This one, this was B7, isn't that 2009 or something? But yeah, I like this car. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I just probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't get like a project car or something. I don't even know how to work on them. You know, not really my thing. You should check out Turkey Tom. You guys are similar. You gays are similar. Thank you, Sneeko, for the two. Appreciate it, bro. If you saw the game source, you'd quickly realize why it's taking over a decade. What do you mean by that, Veraxity? To develop a game that takes up less than a gigabyte of storage than it is to complete Yandere Simulator. Although, if we're accounting for the extremely convoluted lore, coming up with FNAF gets a lot more time consuming. Factor in the fact that Five Nights at Freddy's 2 came out literally three months after the first game, and we can understand just how monstrous Scott Cawthon's work ethic really is, perhaps it's unfair to compare anyone to that. But it remains undeniable that Yandere Dev was handed success on a literal silver platter during this era. He was able to start development on his dream project full time. Yandere Dev can't see the keyboard past his nose, it's hard for him to code give him a break. Neither can I. Neither can I, buddy while subsisting off of Patreon donations from people desperate to see it come to fruition. This would become the golden age, and there would be few tremors in Yandere Dev's ironclad rule as he sat upon the throne of the internet's good graces. However, come 2017 and 2018, things wouldn't remain peaceful for much longer. A combination of horrendous programming and development choices on Alex's part, a few high-profile memes poking fun at him, and the unveiling of his disturbing and degenerate past internet behavior led to a fall from stardom that would not be handled gracefully. This led Alex to be labeled by many as a quote-unquote lol cow, a target for trolling and harassment by those who think they can, uh, milk him for lols. Great. From this point onward, his online following would diminish greatly, and he basically lost all respect both as an online figure and as a game developer. However, he didn't entirely lose his following. Yeah, the, my understanding is that even though he got clowned on, he still had an audience of people that were willing to watch him do basically anything. Like, basically, they'd watch him do anything. I mean, he's still to this day, like, if you go on the Yandere Dev <laughs> channel, right? If you go here, you go to the videos tab. I mean, every video is, like, getting views, right? 
every video has clicks and hits. Like people are excited for it. Even like Yandere Dev Simulator Art Contest. 920k views on an art contest. Nobody else gets that. People straight up don't get art competition videos that have that many views. And so he has like a dedicated following that at least wants to see this vision carried through. I don't know if those people are really around anymore, but for a certain time they were. They really wanted to see this this stuff happen. You know, they want to see this game come out. And now if you look him up, it's just every single video is Debunking every lie in Yandere Dev's apology video. Yandere Dev, two decades of degeneracy. Yandere Dev made the first apology of 2024. I can't imagine what he's going to do, though. I know in his in his apology video, he said he would uh, he would be coming back to work on the game. But I can't, imagine, I can't imagine him doing anything else. He's been doing this for like 20 years. Last year, an extremely serious allegation was made about me that I would like to address. The accusation is that I attempted to groom an underage fan of my game. I will take accountability and admit that I did discuss inappropriate topics with a fan. Mother nature sexualizes minors. Puberty starts to give uh, and wide hips to children yeah, before this is they foul, try to It's not like, you know, a person does it to a child. The child's own body. See, this is what I'm talking so about. I don't, I don't know how you get it. I don't know how you, I don't know how you justify this. And cast a magic spell that gives them births. Haha, <laughs> I've sexualized you. I gave you births. And the child is like, no. Yeah, I, I don't know. Pretty based edit. I feel a little sus about an audience so hellbent on supporting a person who's weird with minors to make a game about stalking high schoolers. I mean, it definitely makes you, seeing the stuff he said to that girl, it definitely makes you reinterpret his history online and, and like the game itself and how he feels about it. You know, his intentions with it, maybe. One of the things he said within within the conversation she had with him was something to the effect of, uh, well, you know, people in the, the girls in the game, I mean, they're all 18, but that's just because people will get mad. We know they're not really 18. Um, and that makes you wonder with that. And then the comment he made about sexualizing minors and then the other stuff he said to her, it, make, it makes you wonder what's going on in that guy's head a little bit. Minors are better than minors. Very true, Sneeko. Thank you. There still remain those who had come to care Glad for you're a fan, Sneeko. Love your stuff. would be able to publish something, anything, after so much development. And it was amidst this limbo, which went on for years, where he was constantly memed on and criticized online, that some truly ugly allegations would rear their head. In September of 2023, a video was posted by YouTuber AliMCC that outlined various conversations across Snapchat and Discord involving Alex, who, mind you, is a 35-year-old man at this point, speaking inappropriately with, allegedly, a 16-year-old girl. I say allegedly, but in January of this year, 2024, Yandere Dev actually posted an apology addressing these allegations. And, well, not many denials were made. This led most people to believe the allegations are completely correct, and it also led to the apology being memed to death until it was deleted literally less than a week later. Why? Why? Why did he? Brief overview out of the way. Do we have an explanation for why he deleted it? That was my question. <sighs> because even though it was a bad apology, I feel like a lot of the comments from his own fans actually liked it and seemed to agree with it. But then, as soon as you had like you know August the Duck or Mudahar on him for it then all of a sudden the the apology gets deleted but i'm i'm just i'm just really curious i'm really curious why he got rid of that did he realize that he was wrong did he realize that he got he got called out was johnny gilbert is this guy like getting famous again if you know me i don't realize this guy was popular anymore i thought he i thought he fell off damn well good for him i guess ready for a deep dive i'm going to go through each of these outlined eras the past era pre yandere dev the gold <laughs> I love those. Golden age. I love those pictures. <laughs> We're ready for a deep dive. I'm going to go through each of these outlined eras. The past era. I gotta take pictures like this sometime. I've been jokingly told several times that I look creepy or have a creepy face. I'm 20 years old, but no girl has ever flirted with me or told me that I'm attractive. So I'm starting to feel that it's true. I guess my face makes me look like a creepy, weird guy. So no one wants to get to know me or be around me. I've always been conscious of certain parts of my face, nose, overbite, large ears. And I'm wondering if other people are as unhappy with my face as I am. I can't help being born with certain features inside of my hands. And I can only fix it with surgery that costs thousands of dollars. But is there anything I can do to hide or improve certain features of my face? It's called mewing. I used to have short hair, but now it's longer. I have no idea how to style it or what to do with it. It's frizzy and sticks out like an afro. So is there nothing I can do to style? So there's nothing I can do to style it. Should I grow it longer, cut it short, make an attempt at going for a certain style? Is there any way to permanently straighten your hair? How about temporarily, like for a month or so? I'm sad that no girl has ever shown any interest in me, and I'm really afraid that the problem might be the very structure of my face itself, something I can't fix. I'm a nice, friendly guy. I just want to give. I just want people to give me a chance. <laughs> Here's the truth. 
Ladies and gentlemen, here is the here's the white pill. If you're an ugly guy, you can get pussy. If you look like this guy, you can get mad pussy, okay? How you look as a man does not matter that much. It doesn't. It just doesn't. It's not really just about having having game, okay? If you are if you're really funny and you look like this guy, you will have sex. If you make girls like have fun, you will have sex. And this is not from my own personal experience. I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to say that I'm I'm Mr. Pussy Getter, okay? Cuz I'm not. But I have known guys who are short, have weak jawlines, have the negative canthal tilt, are whatever this, that, broke. Not It's not only status that matters in the end. I've known so many broke guys. That, uh, but Lotan is right. You don't want to be caught posting this on the internet. That sucks. No woman's ever into me, so I go for kids. Jesus, BB. Chill out and chat, bro. True look at Darius IRL. What is that guy actually? I thought this was a, like a good looking dude. Am I wrong? He's not ugly. Um, but yeah, we gotta- Most girls would probably consider him relatively attractive actually, so I don't think that has anything to do with it. Era, pre-Andre Dev, the golden age, and finally, the downfall. And give the Joy by 49ers a breakdown of the most notable events, deplorable accusations, and of course, horrendous cringe. Are you ready? Oh, and of course, timestamps will be in the description. So if a particular era is not what you're looking for, feel free to skip to the next. With all of that finally out of the way, let's truly begin. In the earlier days of Alex's internet behavior, he exhibited an extremely specific and single-minded obsession with the similarities between the anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion and its lesser-known peer, Ra Zifan. Just as I, Jormai49, am clearly obsessed with being the best and most engaging edutainment creator on the entire internet, Alex was so enamored with the idea of spreading the word about how similar these two anime were that, on basically every site he used, he named himself Eva Zifon, Zifon Eva, Neon Eva Zifon, or some other amalgamation of the two anime's names. Is Evangelion good? I've actually never even, I've never seen it. I know that it's like... The real anime is the based one, it's the red pill one everybody talks about. Is it is it is it good? Is it worth watching? Is it worth my time? I kind of don't. I don't know. I'm not really inclined to watch it, but I know everybody, everybody says it's pure Kino. He also began to spam 4chan with cherry pick screenshots showing the similarities, some of which got him insulted due to a clear lack of critical thinking, like the time he mistook what is clearly a bus as a train in order to make his point stick better. The epitome of this obsession was when he created an entire website designed to house more than 400 images showing the similarities between the two anime. For the benefit of basically nobody, I, I don't know who was really viewing this site. Now, obviously, I'm not expecting you all to care about Alex's random obsession with the similarities between True. the anime. It has a significance beyond just being kind of weird. Okay. And the significance is that it was actually- Plasma says no. <laughs> gotcha. Actually part of the way internet dwellers were able to link all of these accounts to the Yandere dev we know today. See, the fact that Alex was so consistently making these two anime part of his branding made it quite simple to connect the dots of his online activity across various sites, some of which being 4chan, Gaia Online, fanfiction.net. Sneeko says yes to Evangelion. Okay. Thank you, Sneeko. Noted. I feel like Sneeko actually probably would like that anime. And most notably, Mogulus, which would later become Livestream.com, where he entered the burgeoning market of online live streaming. And it also helped us link all of this activity to him in the current day, because he still hasn't let this go. As if the heavens aligned to allow Alex the ability to spread this strange esoteric anime knowledge to the world, in 2018, years after he stopped using all these accounts, he was featured on the YouTube channel Did You Know Anime to narrate their episode on Razifon. And what do you know it, he spent a long time talking about how similar Razifon is to Evangelion. Well, I mean, that's one thing I can get him. He does have a good voice. He has a very good, uh, <laughs> he has a very good narration voice. I feel like it doesn't totally fit his face, although maybe people feel that way about me too. I feel like I get comments like that a lot, but his, uh, his narration voice is quite good. Thought it would only take me a few months, but I kept adding new things to the list, so my departure from YouTube lasted way longer than I expected it to. Over the past year, I've been working on a wide variety of different things. I added a whole bunch of new features, and I made a ton of quality of life improvements that were requested by players. I replaced some old visuals, and I improved the game. Very good, very good narration voice. He could have had a career as a voice actor or just a YouTube narrator, in my opinion. Imagine the the, the nice reality where Yandere Dev, instead of being a freak, decided to uh, decided to simply simply become a YouTube video essayist like myself. Imagine the work we could have done together, the collabs. Oh my God! If nothing else, this guy is consistent. But I digress. So now I've talked a lot about how we knew these accounts belonged to Alex. But what exactly happened that was significant enough that people today still care? I mean, the last time these accounts were truly active was pre Yandere Simulator era, which was nearly 10 years ago now. Well, given the current status of Alex's reputation and the intense scrutiny he's been facing for years now, it led people to scrutinize the entirety of his online behavior. 
And what they found, well, it, it was telling. The most significant of Alex's online activity occurred on the sites that I mentioned before. The forum site Gaia Online, where he chronicled his warped worldview and his extreme difficulties in getting a girlfriend. Fanfiction.net, where he uploaded some truly atrocious tales that would shake even the most diehard coffin of Andy and Laylee fan. The Loser's Message Board, a forum for a webcomic where he fought the fanbase about how unattractive he finds quote-unquote sluts, and how his ideal girlfriend Base. Be, uh, quote, youthful, babyish, wait, what? And childlike. Whoa, wait, 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 no, I'm not base. I spoke too soon. Oh my god, wait, what? What childlike? <laughs> Jesus. My childhood was very sheltered, almost unbelievably so, and I was very rarely, if ever, exposed to the notion of females harboring attraction to males or females with sexual desires. When my sheltering ended and I was exposed to the fact that females like this existed, I literally had a mental breakdown. I was disgusted more than I've ever been in my entire life and frequently stated my rejection and hatred for such slutty and perverted females. <clears throat> Jesus. Fan base about how unattractive he finds quote-unquote sluts and how his ideal girlfriend would be, uh, quote, youthful, baby. Youthful, babyish, feminine, innocent, naive, childlike, pure, uncomplicated, unsophisticated, trusting, charming, polite, pleasant, sweet, lovable, cute, cypheric, malleable. These qualities could be represented by anything from personality to cute speech patterns. I've always wanted a girl who makes me want to hug her and protect her and nurture her. I mean, some of this sounds nice, but I don't see why the childlike and naive and innocent stuff is needed. Like, why? Why does it have to be that? When he says malleable, is it so he can so he can mold her into his into his image, into his own image? I mean, having a girl who you want to hug and protect, I guess, is nice, but um, I don't know that he's protecting anyone, first of all, and, I mean, secondly, why malleable? So you can make her, like, your perfect your perfect yandere girl, you can make her your perfect little anime girl who just knows every fact about Evangelion. I just want a girl who I can mold to, like, all the anime and things that I like. I just want a girl who likes things that guys like. Do you guys know that feeling when you like, when you want a girl who likes everything that you like and won't shut the up about it i just want a girl who likes ufc <laughs> yeah you you want a girl who likes ufc I bet. and child love oh and as we've already established he was active on 4chan and the streaming site monculus i'll now go through the most significant findings from each of the sites in the same order i just outlined girl who knows all the fnaf lore yeah great sneeko says i like a girl who likes me that's a high bar high standard dude and we can potentially begin to understand the joker-like origins of the man who became the internet's most controversial i just want a girl who likes ai art a video game developer. Starting with Gaia Online, this site was most notable for hosting an extreme amount of cringe and down bad posts from Alex. Most notably, he got in the habit of consistently posting pictures of his face with full-on rocket scientist level analyses of his features, and how those must have led girls to find him unattractive. Another personality is the most important thing, but I'm afraid that no girl would ever want to give me a chance in the first place because of my ugly looks, because of my face, no girl could ever see me and feel weak in the knees. If you love at first sight, it's so discouraging to know that no girl could ever find me attractive. It's impossible to have any self-confidence with a face like this one. I think it's just not that big of a deal. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Being an ugly man is fine. It's probably easier than... Actually, I know it's easier than being an ugly girl. It's so... It's so fine, dude. It's fine. I can't speak for everyone, but to me, one of the cool things about life is being born and... You can sort of view life as almost a video game character creator where you can build different skills and parts of yourself up. I mean, there are there are parts of yourself you can't change, I guess, like your physical appearance. You can't change... You can't change amazingly, right? Like you can't, you know, I mean, for me, for example, okay, we'll take me. I'll never have a super strong jawline. I will never have, I will never not have a large nose. Um, I will never have a positive cantle tilt. I'll never have predator eyes. I always have prey features, but like you can work out and get jacked. You can, I don't know. I'm not doing that, but you can get it I, or I'm doing that. I'm not going to do this, but you can get a haircut. You can make yourself look better. Bro doesn't even look average. No one's talking about looking like a model. You can be ugly and get pussy though. I've known guys when I was in high school and college, fat, ugly were the hottest girls that I wanted to bang so bad, so bad. When I was a senior in high school, there was this girl that I had like been thinking about since I knew that was a thing you could do. And she was dating like a fat, awkward guy who was really funny. That's literally it. Like he was funny. He had fun. He was kind of rizzy, you know, it's not about game as in like a pickup artist way. It's just about like being, being sociable. Like it's just, it just doesn't matter. Or like if you're, if you're an ugly guy, like just do something cool or like, I mean, for example, like all the, like a bunch of rappers are like ugly. A bunch of rappers and music artists are like really weird, ugly men. They're not, they're not Chad maxing or anything. Yeah, but Tom, you're a social outspoken guy with millions of fans and probably millions of dollars. I bet being Turkey Tom helps. Yeah, I mean, to an extent, yes, but I wasn't born with that. I, I also got that. I would say that one thing YouTube has given me is access to meeting more people. Um, just because like the internet is so vast and expanding that I can, 
more easily connect with people and have spontaneous interactions. But once again, like that's, that's something I did. That's not something I was given. That's not something that was intrinsic to me. I'm not, I'm not trying to suck my own dick here, but like I got this stuff because I tried to get it. You know, I tried to get a YouTube channel and I didn't, and I, and I, and I didn't do that because I wanted pussy. Um, and once again, I'm not, I'm not trying to make it out. Like I'm getting a ton. Okay. (laughs) But, but if you work at something and you're motivated, you know, you have kind of a goal in mind and you're like self-motivated towards that goal and you're really trying, whether you're successful in the moment or not, people find that attractive, you know? It's being ugly and thinking the world owes you. I mean, if you're ugly, it feels bad to be ugly, but I think the, the, first of all, he's not even that ugly. Like he could be way worse looking. And secondly, like there are things you can do to change how you're perceived. There are definitely girls that would find someone that looks like him cute, believe it or not. Even just on physical appearance, there are definitely girls that find guys that look like that cute. It's not that tough. As no girl had ever preferred. Things are not so black filled. They're not. Best her love for him. He actually became somewhat infamous for this, with him introducing pictures of his face with prompts like, I'm afraid I have a creepy facial structure, and I have an ugly face and poor fashion sense. Though he always makes sure to emphasize how nice and sweet he is as a person, to show that what he's really doing he's is nice guy. for compliments. Ultimately, this behavior was harmless. I mean, it was cringe and unnecessary, but harmless nonetheless. That is, until his desperation got the best of him, and he posted a photo of another user thirsting over her and saying how he, quote, would trade anything in the world. You did work hard, but being ugly and living with parents wouldn't help some guys. I'm not saying it helps, but maybe you should work to not live with your parents or something. That would help. Once again, like, I just, this whole being ugly thing, like, if you're, if you're ugly or if there's things about yourself you don't like, like, accept what you can't change, change what you can, move the f*** on. The longer you ruminate on this, the worse your, your life will be. The chance to kiss a girl like that. And then she turned out to be a high schooler oh, no. while he himself was already a legal adult. Oh my god! This was only 2008 and he was already a full grown man. He would have been either 19 or 20 years old at this point. Overall, this is once again effectively harmless, because there's no way to prove Alex knew how old this girl was, and honestly it's likely he didn't, but it's important to keep in mind going forward. On fanfiction.net, Alex continued his worrying behavior by posting disturbing tales such as I am your slave and life of a sex slave. These are some of his more infamous creations, so I'm sure anyone who has been following the drama for any period of time has heard of these, but trust me, don't try reading either of these. They are horrendous much worse than I expected, even given the names. Just to really desensitize anyone from going to find these, one of the tamest lines from the life of a sex slave is, I am a toy, and my owner plays with me every day. I would Jesus. be honest some more and make some more jokes about the lines, but it's honestly really depressing, trust me. Moving on, Alex's behavior on the loser's message board continued multiple worrying trends exhibited in his previous conduct. However, the most notable difference here was that this was the first time he made an attempt to explain his odd remarks and warped worldview. In the aftermath of a large-scale argument with the site's resident posters about his intense dislike of, as he puts it, sluts, Alex explains to another user the reason his perspective is so different from everyone else's. According to him, he was extremely reserved and never had a normal high school or even middle school experience. As he puts it, quote, Directly after elementary school, I was entered into an independent study program. It's a lot like homeschooling. I do all of my schoolwork at home, and once a week I turn the work into a teacher at my program's local building. I never had a chance to experience junior high or high school. I never found out what the quote-unquote real world was really like. This is why, for the longest time, I believed that the world was no different than it was in elementary school, or in the various forms of media that I enjoyed. I watched countless box sets of anime and played through a countless number of video games. Coupled with my only worldly experiences in elementary school, this did not paint a very good picture of what the world is like for me. I'm not going to say it myself, but if someone wants to comment, average Redditor backstory, <laughs> I will smack a like on <laughs> Anyway, now with the added context that- I mean, what advice would you even give him here? Just like touch grass, I don't know. It's cool to enjoy media and enjoy things, but you gotta go outside now and then. Yeah, you just gotta go outside now and then. I mean, I'm a pretty, I'm a relatively terminally online person. I would say I give myself just enough time outside daily to not go completely crazy. Um, but you, you gotta, you gotta give yourself a little more than one minute a day. I recommend, uh, if you can, when you wake up, if you have time before work, try to experience some sun, try to, try to get a little vitamin D. Usually that helps me feel decent in the morning. That Alex was honestly basically raised on anime and video games. This next part makes a little more sense because as I mentioned earlier, Alex tops off this already pretty horrendous and depressing anime villain origin story with a description of his ideal girlfriend. And let's just say, if you came here knowing the allegations he's faced, his descriptors won't necessarily surprise you. Obviously, I already mentioned adjectives like youthful, babyish, and childlike, but let's not forget naive, trusting, and malleable, all of which suggest a desire to have control over someone's thoughts and actions. Overall, Alex was ultimately harassed off the site, rightfully so, as his activity there culminated in a big meltdown in which he absolutely loses it and goes full Reddit scorched earth on the loser's fanbase. I'm so out of here. 
I've totally demolished all of you debate a thousand times already. If I should choose to honor your- Destiny pill based. If I should choose to honor your stupid rambling by calling it debate, you're all idiots. You're nothing like anyone else I've ever known. None of you are a good asset to this planet or going anywhere in life. You're all, you all fail hard. I should have expected nothing less when I came back to a forum for punk cynical teenagers. Speaking of the comic itself, it's been dead for a long time now. I'm so through with all of you. There's not even a reason to continue typing. What's important is that I came, I kicked your asses, and now I'm over this worthless hole of a forum. Eva out. I mean, what's particularly funny about this is that this guy just spent like months on this forum talking about how much of a loser he is, how he can't get pussy, how he feels so ugly, how he spends all day watching anime and reading Reddit. And now he's like, you guys are all waste of space. You're them, dude. This is projection. What what you hate about them is what you see in yourself. What's important is that I came, I kicked your asses, and now I'm over this worthless hole of a forum. Eva out. With all of this background out of the way, we can see somewhat of a pattern that had developed in Alex's behavior, even at this stage of his life. He would say controversial and deplorable things, and then, when called out for it, he would default to either describing his difficult childhood circumstances, or lashing out with insults and refusing to let anyone else get the last word. So now, with it clearly established that Alex was not fit to handle an online platform, he decided to begin his live streaming career on the website Moculus, which was just starting to gain traffic at that period in time. And given that he was one of the first streamers on the site to have actually a halfway decent streaming equipment, and that he constantly spammed 4chan with links to it. I wondered why I had no baddies for a while. I gave up and focused on myself. Next thing you know, it changed and I realized it's because I actually started to better myself and peeps noticed that. I mean, yeah, one thing, one lesson I've learned in life is often the solution to a problem is not direct. Often it's less linear than you think. So like in this scenario, the actual solution to getting girls to like you is not begging them to like you. It's making yourself likable in your own ways and then they come back around, right? And so this is just, this is just sort of a, a lesson for life. You can apply to a lot of things, I think. The path to success in one field is not necessarily super straight, direct, and it usually takes a long time. It's usually, it, it, it takes a little bit of hard work, a little bit of pain, a little bit of suffering for your swag, but you will get there. Same thing with tests. If you have low tests, stop worrying about it. Just work on yourself and eat right. It will magically fix itself. Don't need for TRT if you're normal. I honestly don't really know. I don't, I don't really know anything about TRT. I don't feel that I have low tests though, so I'm probably never going to get on it. Gobble, gobble, turkey time. Thanks for encouraging me to start being more consistent with working out. Working out on my mom's basement right now while listening. Base, buddy. Keep going. Don't stop. If you stop, I hate you. In his stream, he actually managed to accrue somewhat of an audience. Now, honestly, most of the stuff he got up to while streaming was just more of the same behavior we've come to expect from our smack-talking, smut-writing bad boy. For example, one thing he was absolutely infamous for was flirting with every girl that joined the stream and banning any guy who talked to them in his chat. Base. He also became well known for his obsession Base with possessive boyfriend. chest size of certain Nintendo characters, to the point that he would throw a tantrum when Nintendo <laughs> nerfed his <laughs> which is honestly unsurprising at this point. However, there was one- Seems like a valid concern to me. May have. Happened on this stream and it managed to alienate most of Alex's audience and cause them to go up. Uh, Saab, I am gonna play that game. It might be today, it might be tomorrow, but I am gonna play Five Nights at Cobson's, yes. Elsewhere for their live streaming fix. And this one is particularly disturbing. If you think you'll be triggered in any way by descriptions of uh, improper relationships, then I would advise you to skip to the next chapter. We're almost there regardless. Yes, sir. But ultimately, what Alex has been <laughs> accused of doing Allegedly. is cultivating a relationship with a 14-year-old- This isn't a real video of him, right? This is like a, a deep fake AI type thing. Like, this is like a picture they brought to life. <laughs> Scary. In 2017, the girl came out with a full statement on the matter, which I suggest you read if you would like any more information on oh, the This is from 2017? If they are true, they would paint Alex as an extremely manipulative and entitled person, given that he has supposedly said things like how he felt he deserved to have a relationship with this 14-year-old girl due to the fact that he missed out on having a girlfriend in high school, and that he immediately banned her and started speaking badly about her as soon as she decided she didn't want to be in a relationship with him anymore. He also allegedly did more disgusting and degenerate things than this. In 2017, the girl- Yandere Dev. Yandere Dev slash Ava Zephon slash Alex. So these are just all a bunch of posts that were made, I guess. Um, I'm trying to find the main one. It's the real issue. It's kind of being annoying to find. Uh, here we go. Yandere Dev slash Ava Zephon slash Alex, or at least a former one. I don't think it really works that way. So I'm not sure if this is the right time or place, but it's 1 a.m. This has been keeping me up ever since I learned about it. A friend tipped me off that recently Yandere Dev is no other than Eva Zephon. 
But knowing what I know about him, I just want this information out there so people can make informed decisions about this person and whether or not to support the game. <clears throat> about eight years ago, I was 14 and Eva was 21. I was in eighth grade, finishing up middle school and loved to hang out on his video stream after school. I went by the name Sisefs. I was not quiet about my gender, and when he found out I was a girl, he just went nuts in the way internet creepers do. Being 14 and shy as hell in real life, I enjoyed that attention, not realizing how wrong it was. So when he wanted to date me, I went along with it. Now, I want to point this out. Eva knew I was 14. He was well aware of the entire... He is well aware for the entirety of our relationship. His justification, and I remember this clearly because it stuck out to me as strange, was that since he was homeschooled, he had missed out on the experience of dating girls in high school, and this was the perfect opportunity to make up for that. I reminded him I was in middle school, not high school. <laughs> he said, same difference. Uh, is there proof here? Uh, here's a list of that happened at that point. He asked me for nudes, which I took and then provided to him on an image hosting site that's probably long dead by now. He asked me to pose in specific ways. We sexed over Skype. He masturbated over webcam to me while I made moaning noises over my mic. Jesus. I borrowed my friend's webcam to video chat with him. He asked me to strip, but my friend was in the room with me. Instead, when she wasn't looking, I flashed him. That's as much as I can dredge up from memory. A lot of this has been repressed and only come up over the last few days. I thought long and hard about it. Our relationship was a pretty short-lived affair anyway. Some other things he did that were skeevy as hell. Saw Fletch as his girls as deformed, similar to an amputee. Dismissed me and brushed me aside whenever I spoke about something not related to sex. Told another girl in chat he would keep her in a cage and love her. Begged me to stay with him. Offered to change himself, etc. when I needed things. Then when I refused, banned me altogether from the streams and began to spread vitriol about me. Lied heavily to cover his own tracks. I'm under the impression that his story of the his version of the story is as follows. I was some desperate girl who sent news unsolicited to everyone and ev everyone and anyone, and he deleted the disgusting pics and banned me as soon as he learned I was underage. Believe what you want, I'm not here to garner attention or stir up drama, hence the throwaway account. I just want the truth of it out there. I don't know if I'll ever return to this account, but if I do, I'll try to answer any questions you may bring up. If you'd like proof, I'm sorry. I don't really know how to go about proving any of this. The pictures are long gone. The Skype account is no more. The live stream account is inaccessible. Just know that I have nothing to gain from doing this. Okay, so I guess take this with a big grain of salt. Big, big grain of salt. I don't know if this is really <sighs> real. Uh, I thought I saw something they had posted that looked like maybe some proof or something. Let's see here on their full Tumblr. It looks like this is... So they visited home and tried to find some screenshots, but it doesn't look like they could find a lot. <sighs> Jesus. I mean, it looks like a lot of screenshots, but nothing of it looks like it's super confirming of much happening. Um, but that's interesting if that actually happened. I mean, I wouldn't totally doubt it now, given what we know now about him, but um, there just isn't a lot of proof. React to Brian Risso now? Who was that? Do I, why do I know that name? Oh, only using me Blade. Thanks for the five. I'm doing a video about him right now. It's coming out. Girl came out with a full statement on the matter, which I suggest you read. I mean, I, we can't know if this is real. I miss Tumblr. You shouldn't. Um, I don't. I don't know if this is real, so we can't. We can't prove it's real or not. But um, you know, on this charge, we're gonna have to go innocent until proven guilty. I think. But it's interesting. He should have spent more time developing his muscles at the gym. True. If you're busy developing your muscles at the gym, you have less time to groom children. If you would like any more information on the allegations. If they are true, they would paint Alex as an extremely manipulative and entitled person, given that he has supposedly said things like how he felt he deserved to have a relationship with this 14-year-old girl due to the fact that he missed out on having a girlfriend in high school, and that he immediately that's banned such, her. <laughs> that's such a twisted mindset. Since she decided she didn't want to be in a relationship with him anymore. He also allegedly did more disgusting and degenerate things than this, but I won't be going into those here. There are other videos that do the allegations much more justice than I ever could. For now, what's important is that we finally reached the end of the Eva Zifon age. Alex had essentially destroyed whatever good faith that the internet had in store for him and alienated what could have been a very lucrative career for himself as one of the internet's first online live streamers. But luckily enough, he was about to get the opportunity of a lifetime. Not only would he be handed yet another lucrative endeavor on a silver platter, but he would also get a golden opportunity to rebrand himself, to leave behind Eva Zifan and all of the animosity towards him, and to become something new. To become the Yandere Dev. Now, as I briefly mentioned in the intro of this video, Yandere Simulator as a concept originated from one single post that Alex made on a whim on 4chan, which managed to pick up some steam. I mean, it wasn't completely out of the blue. According to Alex, he worked at a quote-unquote video game company for three years, whatever that means. So he supposedly had development experience and simply wanted to see if it would be feasible to make his dream project on his own. And, well, long story short, it was feasible. People seem genuinely interested in the idea of playing as a schoolgirl yandere, which is as Alex- Sometimes I feel like girls only like me for my father's jet. Does your father own a plane? Sometimes that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Sometimes I feel like girls only like me because my dad has a cool plane. <laughs> what is wrong with you? That's so awesome. A girl who loves a boy so much that she is willing to threaten harm. What's your max bench? My max bench ever is 195 pounds. Um, I don't really squat at all. Have you seen improvements from the bulk yet? Actually, no, I have not. In fact, I thought I was 180 pounds. I weighed myself recently. I was 174 pounds, which means I seriously need a bulk, uh, which also means... 
Ladies and gentlemen, second protein shake today. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, I just haven't been eating enough protein. I haven't. I need to. I need to have more. Um, and I, I think I need to. I need to be okay with carbs too. I think I need to start eating cereal and pasta again because I haven't really been doing that. I haven't been on the bread lifestyle. What's up, Wendigoon? But yeah, no, the bulk is not really happening. I need to eat way more. I lost too much weight. At my peak weight, I think I was 187. And my goal was to get down to 175 and go back up. But uh, I lost a little more than I thought I would. 175 is your max weight. It's not. I, I've been 12 pounds heavier. But I want to get up to I want to get up to like 195 and then go back down. That's my goal. Or any other girl who seems interested in him, doing whatever it takes to worm their way into Senpai's arms, even if that means killing their competition. Of course, there were people who fought back against the concept, calling it creepy for a grown man to be developing a game where this is the premise. I'll leave the judgments up to the Jormai 49ers. But what is undeniable is that Yandere Simulator was a hit. Deb is L, no wenches, currently a <laughs> scurvy. Especially starting in March of 2015, about a year after the project's inception, when PewDiePie uploaded his first playthrough of a demo version of the game. 10 million views, oh my god. That's, that's so much. Sometimes I forget this was that popular. I forget it was that famous back in the day. My ball again. Hey, my, look at my friends. Classic view. Hey, it's my friends. How are you? Yes, we're friends. Best friends. Look, I like PewDiePie. I can't, I cannot stomach classic PewDiePie. I love everyone. I'm so happy. Hey, yo, selfie app. Oh God, oh God, what's going on? The voice is a little tough. Saref, did I spawn a Titan? I was trying to learn the controls and I think I, sp I spawned a Titan, didn't I? I Wait, are there Titans what in this the game? Is that what? normal? What? Floor mopping simulator 2015. Listen, PewDiePie is the GOAT, but classic PewDiePie Let's Plays, like everything, didn't age that well. Can't hold it against him too much, but uh, <laughs> you know. Different time, different time. This was followed shortly by Jacksepticeye and Markiplier uploading their playthroughs, with Markiplier's in particular going absolutely viral, even sprouting a few channel memes like Boobs McKenzie. It was at this point that Alex, who was now going by Yandere Dev, was reassured that this was a worthwhile idea. He established a website specifically for posting updates on the game's progress, he made multiple YouTube channels for the same purpose, and in 2016, he opened a Patreon so he could continue developing the game full-time without worrying about needing to do other work in order to make money. Although, what those Patreon funds went to has been called into question. Like the time he apparently used Patreon money to buy a sex doll and literally left a review on the sex doll site using his official email. Are you kidding me? What does he appeal to a sex doll? Wouldn't you rather just masturbate? Isn't it kind of creepy to f something made of silicone? I feel like that's kind of horrifying. But, uh, uh let's ignore <laughs> go back to when all was well in the Yandere Kingdom. Because obviously, this is not where the story ended. If the Jormai 49ers have learned anything, it's that a sudden explosion of visibility almost always spells disaster. And this was certainly the case for the newly dubbed Yandere Dev. Although this is the thing, people blow up, they just don't know how to, they just don't know how to deal with it. They just don't know, they don't, they don't know how to deal with the rush a little bit, you know? I'm thankful that, you know, I've definitely made my mistakes over the time of my career, but I feel like every time I've had a little burst of popularity, I've never gone too crazy with it. At this point, I try to just, if, if I if I get a good a good performing video, I try not to let it get to my head. I just try to replicate that success and just push on. Another medium, yeah, he's got the fire music taste in these videos. You got to uh, you got to chill if you get any kind of success. You got to not let it get to your own head. And also don't spend the money on sex dolls, Jesus. It did take a pretty long time for things to sour. But speaking of a pretty long time, this actually brings us to the first grievance most people had with Yandere Dev. And what I mean by that is that the game's development was taking a pretty long time. It seems almost absurd to say that people were criticizing the fact that Yandere Simulator hadn't seen a full release even back in this time period, considering the fact that now, about 10 years later, it still hasn't been released. But it's true. The game has taken an absolutely ridiculous amount of time to develop, even for such a small development team. But why ever would I say something like that? I mean, after all, with just one single person helming development of a project with so many eyes on it, it could really be that it just takes that long to finish. And who am I, Jormai49, someone with no game development knowledge, to say that the great and glorious Yandere Dev hasn't made sufficient progress on his game during the time he's been at work? Well, my dear Jormai49ers, allow me to read to you just my a dear few of the features that have been Well, my dear Jormai49ers. Simulator, and I'll see if you can pick up what I'm putting down. Teachers will no longer react to the sight of Yandere-chan throwing a stink bomb if they are guarding a corpse. 
The hair template.png texture in the streaming assets folder has been replaced with new hair texture for Yandere Chan. From now on, any female student with a smile as their default facial expression will no longer smile if Ryoba tries to speak with them if the student has witnessed Ryoba commit murder in the past. The act of carrying a candle throughout school is now considered a suspicious behavior. Updated the characters page of the official website with new artwork now for now if Ryoba looks to change the hairstyle for the the asylum. The art club in 1980s mode now creates unique cherry tree paintings on Friday. I feel like this is kind of a... This is kind of a ridiculous way to add updates. I feel like when 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 game developers update their stuff, it's not this meticulous with every little thing, right? I feel like he's almost writing down every little thing he does to feel like he's actually getting things done. When in reality, he's just he's just not. Has he smoked a Newport on stream yet? Not in my hotel room. <laughs> Maybe I can do a little IRL stream at some point. I think that'd be funny. IRL stream in Phil in Philadelphia. Instead of creating the same paintings that they do in the 2020X art club. Thank you. Thank you, Yandere Dev. That was the one I was waiting for. Whew. Now, you might be thinking that this seems somewhat reasonable, but join my 49, I hear you say. But I've been I've been uh I've been smoking these guys lately. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These are the ones. Is there a fire there's a there's a fire alarm in here, yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny if I smoked it in here, though. And if all of those features aren't necessary, isn't it normal there would be many features added over 10 years of development? Just got the whole hotel I evacuated. Mean, I really do. But what I just read to you was a small fraction of the features added to the game in 2022, the ninth year of development. Look at the scroll bar on this page, which is dedicated entirely to cataloging the updates that occurred in 2022 alone. It would take me literal hours upon hours to read them out loud. So, yeah, it wasn't really the development of the original project was taking such a long time. It was that Yandere Dev just couldn't resist adding more and more features, to the point that the current demo barely even resembles the original build played by our favorite horror game connoisseurs back in 2015. Honestly, even if I was a super fan of this game, I think I still would have jumped ship as soon as Alex started talking about developing 1980s mode when the original game wasn't even finished, but I digress. Eventually, it got to the point where people were convinced Alex was doing his utmost to make sure the game wasn't going to- Just no focus, no focus at all. Just completely obsessed with uh, completely obsessed with little minute progress points and coasting off of whatever fame and money he had. Does smoking kill gains? Um, no, but if you smoke a lot, your lung capacity will be lower, and you'll probably be able to, you know, breathe less, which will make you, you know, lift less weight, lift weight less good. In short, so there can be bad things about it for sure. Going to be released. In March of 2017, a video game publisher called Tiny Build entered a partnership with Yandere Dev in which they agreed to help him polish, promote, and publish the game. However, by 2018, it was revealed that the agreement had been abolished for some time due to creative differences between Alex and the company. These would ultimately come down to his insistence on adding hundreds of unnecessary features, which we've already been over. There was also a significant drama surrounding the termination of the agreement between Tiny Build and Yandere Dev, including that he supposedly finessed them out of $31,000 somehow. Damn, I don't really know too based. much about it, and I won't be going deeper into it. There's a lot of legalese, and I don't feel equipped to handle it. But now, let's get back to discussing how the agreement between Tiny Build and Alex came to an end. One notable thing that irked Tiny Build was Alex's refusal to allow anyone to rewrite his code. This is significant because it leads us into two more grievances the game's followers had with Yandere Dev. Like a twisted two-for-one deal, this deal falling apart is a great demonstration of both Yandere Dev's atrocious programming skills and his complete inability to take any kind of criticism, constructive or not. Let's start with the first one. Over the years, if I was him, I, become I probably would have just sold the IP a long time ago and just had some other company finish it up with my oversight. You know, because I mean, there's clearly money in, in the game. There's money that people want to pump into it. There's a fan base for it. It can be successful, but he's just not the person to do it. He's not a good developer. He had kind of a cool idea, I guess. You know, people thought it was a cool idea at the time. At the right time, the audience was there, but for whatever reason, he just he couldn't manage to get it together and just actually work on the thing he's supposed to be making. I never understand this. You have such a great opportunity and you waste it. What is wrong with you? Just sit down and do the work. Get the f*** out. Absolutely terrible at programming. This has been addressed in countless forum posts and long-form YouTube videos over the years, but basically, he heavily over relies on if-else statements, which are extremely inefficient and cripple the loading time of the game. He is also notorious for importing models to the game that are way, way, way bigger than they need to be. The best way of demonstrating this to you is to show you the largest file that Yandere Simulator needs to load when you attempt to load in. It's bigger than an entire room, it's bigger than every character model in the game, it's the model that haunts your processor's nightmares. It's a toothbrush. Yeah, so apparently Yandere Dev decided to add an extremely high resolution toothbrush model that was originally intended for <laughs> that's so funny close ups or something. That's actually and really it nice. a symbol to the community of just how doo-doo his programming skills are. Because this toothbrush alone has caused many a game. Five thousand polygon toothbrush. That's so strange to me though, because the game's graphics are I mean, they're like cartoony. So I feel like you could just use a lot of really simple models instead of doing that. It seems completely silly to me. 
Silly Billy behavior. Next, we can get into another one of Alex's flaws that has led him to be memed into oblivion and even to be labeled as a lol cow. That being his complete inability to take criticism. Demonstrations of this can- That is the, the lol cow trait. Not being able to take criticism and having no self-awareness, which are, I mean, kind of intrinsically tied to each other. Um, that is what really makes someone- that is what really makes someone a lol cow. It seems like he was making a fetish game and got bullied into making it legitimate. Um, I think it had fetishistic aspects to him. Like he definitely likes the high school girl stuff and he definitely is kind of attracted to this idea. I think of like a crazy murderous woman. But I also think he did want to make it an actual game in, in his mind at least. I think he just didn't have the the follow through and the work ethic to actually do it and get it done or the you know, talent or skill. <clears throat> I don't know that he was formally trained in anything either. In range anywhere from him calling someone who this could have been an asset flip game flip game people would have eaten it up i mean look at i like pal world is cool but you look at this game i think they did make the models on their own but i mean it basically looks like an asset flipped game right am i wrong here look at this like none of them none of the models are even like the same art style the characters look really generic and boring and people love this just because of the idea of pokemon with guns you know and in practice, when you play it, it's not that much like Pokemon, but it's it's good marketing. It's a good it's a good marketing tactic to have it sold as that, and uh, people just like it. It just works, you know. You don't have to have a super uh, original, you know, game to work. You just don't. It just has to be fun. That's literally it. Asm Gold made a good point about this actually on Twitter, which I I defend a lot of his takes, and I, I recorded a video the other day defending an Asm Gold take that I think was pretty based. Where he said, um, he said the success of Pow World proves the only thing customers actually care about is a good game. AI, slavery, bestiality, copyright infringement is a video game. These are pretend problems people don't actually care about. Make good game equals people buy game. Simple. And I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Asset flip probably going to be useful. I so appreciate his design choices. Either a, quote, young child or mentally handicapped. Classy. To him instantly banning anyone who posts a meme about Fumbling the bag seems consistent with predators like how EDP had zero savings. I mean, that's true. I mean, a lot of these people are very self-destructive, not very forward thinking, but there is one man that didn't throw it all away. Uh, one man who did Money Max. One man who never gave it up. Your fifth amendment right to each of these questions because you know one man who stood for what he believed. That it would result in you being prosecuted for these crimes. Isn't that right? One Our man who didn't kneel for anyone. That the fifth amendment right is there he swung the sword. Based. <laughs> him in his Discord, the latter of which has even resulted in a popular meme where people speedrun getting banned from his Discord server by sending a single message and waiting just a few seconds for him to kick them out. He died? You think he's dead? By the way, as far as I know, the current world record run for getting banned from the Yandere Dev Discord is a mere six seconds. Wow. Alex's defense for this is that it is, quote, exceptionally rare for him to ban someone, and he only does so when it is the mature and intelligent thing to do, naturally. And while we're on this topic, the most popular memes to send in order to get banned were the Are You Coding Son meme, which poked fun at his immense programming prowess, and the Consume the Cum Chalice meme. The Cum Chalice meme originated as a video Alex made back during the Eva Zephon era, in which he was drinking milk from a chalice. This was first made into a meme all the way back in 2010 by YouTuber Dark Pie Man, who combined it with the phrase, I have never had sex. Classic. But unfortunately, we ourselves cannot experience this masterpiece, as Alex has proved our point about him being overly sensitive by copyright striking the video into oblivion. Luckily, the video more recently became a viral GIF courtesy of tenor user FellaCar69, so we still have these GIFs to enjoy. Thank goodness. Alex's sensitivity and harsh reactions also sparked another viral meme in 2020, which in turn brought on an immense amount of backlash as Twitter turned its ire onto him. You see, over the years, people began to realize that Yandere Simulator was never going to be released, so they began rushing to produce a game similar in concept and essentially steal Yandere Dev's fans right out from under his chalice-sniffing nose. This led to development beginning for projects like Lovesick and Watashi no Mono, both of which were inspired by Yandere Simulator. Obviously, Alex didn't take kindly to this, and I think we can all understand being a bit upset in his position. However, what I personally can't understand is sliding into the Discord DMs of the developers of these projects in order to basically harass them into stopping development. To Epic Meal Dev, the developer of Watashi no Mono, Neandre Dev is- This stream clip gonna go crazy at Tom's trial. <laughs> It'll be their opening and closing statement. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Irish? I wish I was drunk. Doing good, bro. Essentially called his project poor quality and said that people were harassing him because Watashi no Mano was so bad that it, as a copy of Yandere Simulator, was reflecting poorly onto the original. But that's nothing compared to his messages with Dr. Ape Is, the developer of Lovesick. Alex said, quote, 
if the cost of Yandere Simulator was ending a person's life, I'd cancel development, end quote, which is interpreted by many as him threatening to commit if Lovesick were to be released and steal his thunder. This led people to start calling out Alex en masse, and the hashtag RipYandereDev began to trend on Twitter. And although Alex did make a response, saying that he never threatened to end his life if Lovesick was released, it was far too late. In the eyes of Twitter, Alex had been quote-unquote cancelled, and that meant that all bets were off. And we all know how scary Twitter could be. The last grievance people had with Yandere I hate this video. Stop, stop using this video, stuff. dude. Overall, stop. Really <laughs> stop. And although this might not be surprising to us after going through his degenerate past as Eva Sifan, down bad streamer extraordinaire, it was something that truly shocked those who had just heard of Alex after Yandere Simulator exploded into the mainstream. Now, obviously, the amount of creepy stuff that surfaced about Yandere Dev in 2023 is one of the worst examples of this. But since we have a foot fetish, nicotine addiction, pick one. I think I've already picked a whole separate section of the video dedicated to that. For now, I'll be touching on the most overtly creepy things Alex did prior to that. Of course, Alex has made a ton of statements already over the years that sound extremely problematic, like when he asked random girls on 4chan to send him sultry and sexy recordings of their voices, supposedly for inclusion in Yandere Simulator as voice lines. Sure, Alex. But I can't go through every single thing Yandere Dev has ever said that sounded mildly creepy, which is why I'll move straight to the big guns. As one of the most egregious examples of something you should literally never say to anyone out loud unless it's 100% clear you're telling some kind of joke, Yandere Dev suggested that the age of consent should be replaced by a quote-unquote sex license that would allow someone to, uh, do the hanky-panky thing if they pass a sex that shows their maturity. Now, unfortunately for Yandere Dev, all of us simpletons are clearly too dense to understand what he was cooking up here. Luckily for us, though, he went through the trouble of further elaborating in a Tumblr post he made in response to backlash for these statements. In it, why can this guy not help himself from just digging his own grave? Like, he's just so much of a freak that he can't even contain it, you know? Imagine if he had just kept all this stuff inside and nobody had to know, or if instead of acknowledging his old internet past, he had just shut the f up about it and made his game. But he just couldn't help. He's just genuinely like a creepy person who's also really stupid. He's just genuinely a really dumb individual, and that's why he can't hide it. And he doesn't need to justify it and try to explain himself because he thinks there's actually nothing wrong with what he thinks. He's not even self aware enough to know that he's a creep. Embarrassing. He mentions how someone had asked him if, under his system, say a 14 year old would be able to obtain a sex license and then fornicate with a grown adult. Alex, you're making me get real creative with the vocab here. Well, as Alex puts it, Well, obviously, if there's a test that objectively proves that a person is ready for sex, and a person passes that test, then that person is objectively ready for sex. This is simple logic. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I, I can't help but feel like this post gave Yandere Dev somewhat of an opportunity to cover his tracks and explain away what he said, but I guess he decided that this was the hill he wanted to die on. The sex license is theoretically open for 14 year olds. Great. Add it to the record. No, of course, this wasn't Jesus. the last thing that Alex said on this subject. He later made another post debunking the claims. Just make the game. That's what I'm saying. Like, why have all these interactions with the community? Like, if he was intelligent at all, he would just make the game and stop focusing on all this drama, you know? Like, he's ob he's obviously not a good person. He obviously has these strange thoughts, but he's also just really stupid. He can't even, can't even push it deep down. Would you fight him? Yeah, I would fight him, I guess. That would be funny. I think we're the same height. I think he said he's 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 He's 5'11", yeah. So we're, we're same height. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight him at like a, a featherweight weight though. I would, I would, I would give him time to train. We would fight at 185. that will be fun. I'm a little younger, so I have the advantage, but you never know what he could bring out. Okay. He's got that, uh, gooner riz. You never know. Allow children to obtain a sex license where he clarifies that his theoretical sex test would require you to have things a child would never be able to obtain, like a college diploma or ownership of a residence. Now, beyond the fact that this is literally contradicted by his own words, it's also pretty crazy to act like it's a better system to make everyone own a house or graduate college in order to bump uglies. But the Draw My 49ers understand my point, right? In the vein of Alex being needlessly creepy, there's also the time he was linked to multiple reviews of a sex doll, which he used his Patreon proceeds to purchase. But I've already mentioned that. Ridiculing someone doesn't do anything except make them feel more alone and more likely to act out. That's your rationalization of behavior. Um, maybe. But... I think Yandere Dev would probably be better off if he slipped on a banana peel and had some horrible injury, honestly. That's my real take. So I'll be moving on now. Overall, I think it's abundantly clear to us that Alex has no perception of how things he says or does will come off to other people, and he cannot be trusted with a large platform. This will be emphasized even further in the next section. However, I would like to include one more thing in this section. The infamous video posted by Yandev himself, Hate and Shame. In this baffling animated project, which has since been deleted and re-uploaded due to the original artist denouncing it, Alex portrays himself We're gonna try to finish this video and then I'll go on kick or keep as a cute anime girl and his detractors as little gremlins in order to tell the story that if you say you're on a diet and the gremlins catch you eating candy one day a month, they will compile all the photos of you eating candy in order to make it look like you're always eating candy, making you seem disingenuous for claiming you're on a diet. 
The argument seems sympathetic as he says it, until you actually think about what he's saying. Because it's one thing to have candy once a day when you're trying to lose weight, and it's another thing entirely to say or do something creepy and reprehensible once a month and continue pretending you're not a degenerate. In this video, he's quite literally comparing a cute anime girl being photoshopped by gremlins eating candy to him being criticized for saying children should be able to get a sex license. I don't know what kind of boy math Alex is doing. I had actually never even heard of that video. That's really funny though. Right now. And this is what I choose to end this section with. I couldn't have possibly found a better instance to fully encapsulate his character and online presence than this video. It almost makes me want to pack things up now and just skip the next part. Almost. I didn't realize there was so much of a, a history. I didn't know literally, I think almost any of this until this part. I didn't know he, he had such a degenerate history. Um, obviously, this, this next part will be a lot of repeat for us who have been following the story, but it'll be good to get a recap anyway. Maybe he'll bring up some details we haven't seen. Overall, it's safe to say that everything which occurred from 2014 to 2023 coalesced in a very worrying look for both the Andre Simulator and its developer as a whole. Furthermore, it had now been years since the hype surrounding the simulator had fully died. PewDiePie had since died on some bridge in PUBG. Markiplier, I think, started baking at some point. I'm just kidding. Follow Justin Saiyan on Instagram. One thing they weren't doing, though, was playing the same demo for a game which still hadn't seen a proper release in nearly 10 years, and for which development seemed to have no end in sight, especially not one with such a problematic developer. But the problems were really only just beginning, because despite everything, Yandere Dev still had things to lose. He was still obtaining that juicy Patreon money, and there were still people co- how, how much was he making a month? Hold on. Problems were really only just beginning, because despite everything, Yandere Dev still had things to lose. He was still- Uh, how does he have 7,000 members and only $1,500 a month? That's not obtaining a that lot. juicy Patreon money. And I thought he would have been like rich by now, considering the hype behind the game. There were still people collaborating with- I thought he actually had a bunch of money. A reality. But that was quickly about to change. Because if you've heard about Yandere Dev recently, kind of you likely know by now that there really aren't many people still willing to associate. Yandere Dev on LolCal Live. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I'm Yandere Dev. Thanks for the dono, buddy. With him. The project has been dropping supporters left and right. People are calling en masse for Yandere Dev to sell the rights to another developer so it actually has a chance of releasing before the heat death of the universe. And there have been so many memes on the subject that it made the coffin seem like small potatoes. Is it overkill to reference that game twice in one video? I feel like it's bad. But let's get into how all this drama started. See, in mid-2023, Yandere Dev once again entered the internet discourse, with inklings going around on TikTok that he was guilty of being a groomer. But what they were referring to wasn't the accusation we already went over from back during his Eva Zifon days. No, this was a fresh allegation, involving several inappropriate messages supposedly exchanged between Alex and a girl who was only 16 years old. And if you're easily triggered and somehow haven't heard about this situation yet, you might want to just skip to the conclusion. In September of 2023, YouTuber AliMCC posted a video going in-depth on these new allegations, providing screenshots from Snapchat conversations that allegedly took place between Alex and the girl, as well as recordings of Discord calls between the two of them. I feel I should note that- I think this shows a lack of self-awareness as well. I mean, obviously, even beyond the creepy stuff, one funny thing to criticize his character for is that he had all this stuff and all these controversies and, like, things he was criticized for. The 14-year-old allegation from years ago from when he was 21, um, the weird stuff about saying there should be like a sex license or stuff like that. Um, and despite having all that and knowing full well how bad all that had been and him having a hard time justifying it and clearly experiencing mental anguish from trying to explain it, despite that, he still messaged a 16 year old inappropriately. That is so baffling to me. That, that is so baffling to, to me. MCC, nothing illegal occurred across any of these screenshots or recordings. Regardless, they clearly depict- It just shows he, he can't, he truly can't help himself. Alex discussing mature, inappropriate, and just straight up gross topics with a girl nearly 20 years younger than him, which led many to, obviously, condemn him. Just to give you an example, there are some screenshots here where Alex was discussing how liking someone who is 17 years old is quote unquote 94.4% okay, because that percentage supposedly represents how close <laughs> the body of a 17-year-old to an 18-year-old. That was a funny one. I almost forgot that one. Which some have found so ludicrous. It must have been Yandere Dev's parents. Hopefully they are too old to even understand what's going on with him. Just think their son is a nice boy. That is actually funny. Involves Yandere Dev saying that because the girl technically had the power to get him canceled. Shout out, and shout out Audi, by messages, the way. She had created like a power dynamic account. in which she had power over him, which was emotionally traumatizing him. She responded with a short and to the point, I'm 16. <laughs> Truly, this is the screenshot of all time. Another gem is when, during their Discord call, Alex says that, quote, 
Mother Nature sexualizes minors through the process of puberty because it gives them adult body parts. Mother Nature sexualizes minors. Puberty starts to give butts and wide hips to children before they turn 18. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if you should be saying this kind of stuff to a 16 year old man. However, I mean, yeah, the thing is like, that's not necessarily wrong. Like that's kind of true, but you, you shouldn't be saying that to a kid. The video with all these allegations was quickly taken down due to a copyright strike, which was supposedly filed by the victim. Ali believed that this was the doing of Alex, who was attempting to silence the allegations by not only filing a false copyright strike, but also inadvertently doxing the victim's real name to the entire internet through the YouTube copyright system. Shortly after this, though, someone claiming to be the victim made a Reddit post about how she had, in fact, filed the copyright claim. Andrew Diff killed my cat, base. Oh, and the reason was that she told Ali MCC not to post the video, and yet she had done it against her will. Ultimately, it's hard for us to confirm the veracity of any of this. But given that it is literally illegal to impersonate someone else to file a false copyright claim, and Alex hasn't gone to jail yet, uh, that I know of, many believe he didn't actually do this. Well, you'd only go to jail if somebody if somebody follows up with a lawsuit, right? And then it would be exposed. So it definitely could have been him. <laughs> we just don't know yet. There's definitely YouTubers I've known, and won't name them, but they have uh, when they filed a like a dispute on on content, right? When they filed a dispute on a copyright claim, they will say, you know, they will give incorrect information because they don't want to give away their docs. But if it never goes to court, you're never going to get penalized by that. The developer of Yandere Simulator. Last year, an extremely serious allegation was made about me that I would like to address. The accusation is that I attempted to groom an underage fan of my game. I will take accountability and admit that I did discuss inappropriate topics with a fan. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the response is pretty bad. This video is two hours long. <sighs> yeah, Dib does not deserve another chance. Okay, wants to be the victim. The victim statement. New evidence. Okay, so the new the new evidence is here. I already know all the details. I think on the actual. Oh, Alex's involvement. Okay, I'd like to know that whole story, so that you know what is true and what isn't true. Let's start at the beginning. Last year, a fan of my game contacted me and wanted to chat. Usually, when a fan. All right, so we went through the we went through the video by Jormy49 about Yandere Dev, that video. Basically went over Yandere Dev's entire online history. It was pretty interesting, it was pretty good, I liked it. Um, there was some there was some good content in there, some good lore. But this video by Harley TBS, I've been seeing this tease for a while now, actually. It's been on my docket of stuff to get done. Apparently there's some sort of legal threat that came to Harley TBS. I don't know if that was from Yandere Dev or from the girl or from someone else, I don't I don't really know. But obviously Yandere Dev, his, his apology, I guess, was seeing this so bad that he decided to just delete it. That's all I can really assume in the absence of an official statement. But um, Harley's been tweeting about this for a bit. Here we have my two hour long Yandere Dev video exposing new evidence and a legal threat I received is out now. This is a thread with all the evidence I uncovered, including all of Yandere Dev's changes to the victim's document, comments on the document, etc. So there's a thumbnail. Share official statement on Yandere Dev, Harley Tatum, Yandere Dev, gmail.com, whoever this is. So he has access to it. Official statement from Yandere Dev, official statement on Yandere Dev. Oh, so um, are they saying that he changed various parts of it? So he did, are the, the implication here I think would be that he wrote the blue parts basically until I made things spicy which obviously puts onus on her which apparently he wrote we had some casual conversation until the first weird interaction this once again front loads it as being innocent pervy sense of humor basically writes it off as just a creepy kind of weird thing rather than like grooming or anything like that so once again passing off responsibility her goal for the video was exposing him trying to diddle a minor yikes glad he didn't so this is to basically front load sort of a bad intention on the on Ali MC of clout chasing or something to that effect my goal is to prevent any future victims if he was truly a P word, which I think she also partly wanted to do, but she was on the Alex hate train, which caused her to be a little pushy and manipulative and to see more personal than protective. During the process, I started to feel a real emotional connection with him, major crush, and I started to purposely get reactions out of him for his attention. But nothing illegal happened. I was aware of his social vulnerabilities and took advantage of this for my own gain. He wrote that. <laughs> <coughs> I assume this is the implication that he wrote this, right? So he basically wrote that he basically wrote that the victim was more um was more was more guilty or was trying to bait him into saying these things to make him look better, right? That's the implication here. Obviously, that is what's being implied. Can we please tweak this line? I'm not trying to learn. I've already learned. I've developed an understanding of why my actions are wrong back in September. I acknowledge the need to adjust my mentality and behavior, and I've been working on myself for the past three months. Can we please update the text to reflect that? Uh oh. So he he was literally directly influencing the I mean the document at least unless these screenshots are fake somehow. I received a legal threat to take down my Yandere Dev video. TLDR, I would not be complying. The legal threat was the same Alex received, which led to his response being taken. Oh, okay, so he took it down because of a legal threat from who, though? My video includes never before seen evidence. So here's the video. There's being shared. Who issued the threat, though? That's my question. Who issued this Who issued this legal threat? And tries to talk with me. I just tell them that I'm too busy. But this person seemed really nice and friendly and funny, so I decided, you know what? Sure, let's talk. She let me know right off the bat that she was 16, but I didn't see any problem with that. When I was 16, I had online friends that were in their 20s and 30s, so it just didn't 
didn't feel weird to me. In the beginning, our conversations were normal, but she had a kind of adult sense of humor, and every now and then she would bring up a topic or ask a question that wasn't really appropriate. When this would happen, I wasn't entirely comfortable with it, but I rationalized to myself that it was no big deal and just kept talking with her. I don't like that we're only a few minutes into this video and Yandere Dev is already trying to spin the narrative that he is the victim in this situation, talking about how he is uncomfortable with some of the comments from the minor and highlighting their adult sense of humor. The picture he's painting is one that makes him look like he's been wronged by the victim. I want to shut down this idea immediately without wasting any breath on it. So as a reminder, here are some of the comments Alex made to this child. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. It's because you keep being cute if you don't want to be called cute and stop being so cute. It's simple logic. <laughs> what if I told you, what if I told you I'm only interested in girls with double deeds, anything less than that is just not attractive? Well, I mean, like, that's your preference, but do you understand how cops work? Uh, nah, no, no. Yeah, big, 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 big as a girl's head. I want them big as a girl's head. I, I wear considered cuter cops. Isn't that crazy? Because, because you're so skinny? So it's like the ratio, the ratio of the, the pair to, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're very skinny and that's kind of hot. Sorry, am I a bad guy for saying that? Should I go? To Once again, like, there's no, there's no way you can justify this kind of comment. There's just no way, you know? Obviously, <laughs> obviously, obviously, there's a difference between grooming and not grooming, okay? Like, some, some way, somehow, maybe you could take some of the comments and be like, oh, they're just weird jokes. But with stuff like this, like, how, what, what is the joke here? This is just him talking to a, to a kid and saying that he thinks they're sexy. And pair that with the age of consent conversations and him talking about how if he had sex with a 17-year-old, then it would only be 90% wrong or whatever. I mean, obviously, <laughs> you can't justify this. Um, no. Wait, hold on. Did you ever answer that question? I asked you if you were- and Then my phone rang. Very conveniently, I had to go flee to answer the phone call. Um, here's, here's a question for you. What makes you think it's possible that I'm- Um, no, ask me that, and I can't answer what was it. You're like, maybe you were shy in college, and maybe- and you haven't had any time to meet people because he and Yeah, exactly. If I'm- oh, does that make me a pathetic loser? Why would it make you a pathetic loser? Mm, it's, it's like, oh, this guy has no riz. He can't get any girl to sleep with him. Is he- is he a virgin? Do we know? Is Yandere Dev a virgin? Uh... 55% uh, uh, yes votes. Is, is he is he a virgin? He might be. I'm pathetic. How old, isn't he? Wait, how old is Yandere Dev? How are you 35 and haven't had sex like once? I'm not even making fun of him. I'm just genuinely perplexed. Like how have you never run into a situation where you've never fucked someone? Especially if you're like famous. Like there are people who are throwing themselves at him. There's definitely some that are legal adults who throw themselves at him. Why hasn't he had sex? He owns sex dolls. I mean, there are certainly there are some people who own sex dolls who have had sex, right? Maybe less. No, but he doesn't go outside. I mean, couldn't he find someone else who doesn't go outside and them? I think you are, top being or not, because, like, if you're not, then, like, good for you, yeah, but if you are, like, hmm. You want to steal my first time? Well, Whoa! I'm not very experienced with ladies. You can tell. No, no. Wow, wow, okay, bye. You can still have any time. It was not like that. You still have any time. Wow, so mean. You're such a bully. I'm unable to do this weekly challenge in size. It is so hard. What's, what's the weekly challenge? Don't... Oh my god, so I know that the official is or 18, but, like, is it high school? No, it's a post high school academy. So how old is everyone? Everyone's 18. It's like 18 or like 18 plus. Everyone in the, well, I mean, there's like adults, like the teachers <sighs> are older than. Yeah, so I think there's no, <laughs> there's no justification here for what he did. We've already, we've honestly, we've seen the worst of the DMs. I think there's no, there's no real uh, point to going deeper into that. We've read them all before, but I'm curious to see what this new evidence is. I don't know if it's new evidence, meaning new evidence that he was grooming her or new evidence about the legal threat. Who is the legal threat from? That's my question. But you don't have to just take my word for it. The girl has written a statement about the entire situation, giving her side of the story. I put a link to it in the description below. This is ironic because apparently he was the one <laughs> helping her write the statement. So he says you don't have to take my word for it, but by reading the statement, you are taking his word for it. Okay, Alex, let's talk about the victim's statement. But first, I would like to bring up a rather inconvenient piece of information for you. This statement is not the victim's statement. And you know that. You see, what Alex doesn't mention in this video is that he had a strong hand in the creation of this document. The victim was involved and wrote parts of this document, but Alex then went over the entire document and told them to change any statements he felt made him look bad. And with it in mind that Alex was heavily involved with this document and pressuring the victim to make it something PR appropriate for him, I would argue almost every statement in this document is now void. I will be leaving screenshots of the victim's original statement before Yana Redef made any edits and a copy of every change he made to this document on my Twitter, but I'd like to highlight some of the most egregious changes right here. I am Jane, or Jelly Squish, or Jelly Ann, or Yandev's victim. This is my statement on everything that happened with Alex, aka Yandere Dev. I was a fan of Yandere Simulator for a good chunk of my childhood, as were many others. I love I has come. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate it. Cupquake, Markiplier, Loom, our favorite highlighter, the whole crew. Because of how much I love the game, I wanted to reach out to the creator via email. I sent to avoid ever mentioning this specific name. I don't want to resurrect ancient dead drama or comments and that it wasn't a fake account. So I suppose all those Yandere Simulator videos I made in the past have come back to benefit me because the connections I have allowed me to get access to this document. And so I can prove definitively that this was Yandere Dev as his email address is attached. Back on topic, he's trying to get the victim to reframe the narrative to make them the 
malicious party and be more charitable to Right. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's basically just rewriting it to make it look like she was pressuring him and he's somehow a victim of her advances when in reality, obviously he's a 35 year old man. He, he's the one who has to know better. Does he, does he not talk about the legal complaint? Uh, Legal. Here we go. Legal threats. Hey, hey, hey. I have an update for you. Originally, I planned to end the video at this point and move on to another subject. But then, I received a legal threat from a third party involved in this situation with a request to remove all coverage of the situation from my channel. You may have noticed that Alex took down his video too. This is why. I think it's obvious at this point though that I won't be complying with these takedown requests. I'd like to explain why. One, all of my videos are protected by fair use law. Two, I only discuss factual evidence or provide a disclaimer where necessary that information discussed is alleged. And three, all information included within my videos is either already public or I have direct consent to publicize it. However, you may have noticed at this point that I've removed my past two videos on this subject. That's because, although I know my content is compliant with YouTube's terms of service and the law, YouTube will comply with any takedown request, and I don't wish to risk receiving three strikes and losing my channel on a bet that YouTube won't completely f*** me over. For that reason, I've decided to include both of the two videos I've taken down from my channel within this video, so that if you haven't seen them until now, want an archive of them, or want to know- The thing is, they won't comply with any takedown requests. If you expose personal information like emails, I mean, PEI, person, personally identifiable, PIE? Is it PIE? Personally identifiable, whatever, whatever it is, right? If you include, like, an address or an email address or stuff like that, that will get, you know, the video taken down but i don't think though i don't i don't think they'll take down literally any video just because i i get privacy complaints once in a while on videos and i don't show anyone's email so i usually ignore it and then nothing happens right one time i did get uh when i don't think i did anything wrong uh, but that was years ago typically when i get privacy complaints i ignore it um and youtube when they review it they see that there's nothing weird going on like i'm not doxing anyone or anything like that so they're not going to just take down the video oh, what was said that it's all still accessible i believe in getting the information out there and not giving alex wiggle room to get away with this which means i want the entire uncomfortable truth out there even if it means this video is longer than originally intended. That said, I'll let a not so sleepy version of myself from the past take over. You know, I have this strange feeling that somehow I've stepped two years back into the past. I never thought I was going to make another video about Yandere Simulator, Yandere Dev, or anything even loosely related to this situation ever again. When I was getting my start as a commentator, I milked this situation dry. I made videos daily about it. I am still to this day embarrassed by the kind of content I put out back then. I milked this situation like the milk was made of diamonds and Diamonds in this analogy taste really good. And then I grew up, Base. I still get people to- Yeah, he doesn't say who took down the fucking, so all this is stuff we've already looked at really, but he doesn't say who who sent the legal threat. But it was a third party, he said, I wonder if it was the girl? I feel like it must've been the girl. I don't know anyone else who was involved in the situation really, but there must be, there there must be some explanation of who did it now. I wish I knew. I wish we could get some explanation for this. Kind of sucks. Agony, he already spoke with him. Who is Agony? Or are you, oh, you're talking to someone in chat. Okay, gotcha. No shame to six dolls when a woman has a pink bunny super deluxe, it's okay, but when a guy has a or 5,000 self-lubricating freak off doll with built-in vibration. That's where we draw the line. I have a problem. I would I would not have sex with a girl who uses dildos. It's kind of weird. Definitely wouldn't date a girl who uses dildos. What is that? It's foul. Sorry. Sorry to any any dildo enthusiasts in chat, but that's gross. That's pretty nasty. Too mad should be his wingman. True based. <coughs> he doesn't need his computer taken away. That's real. It's it's strange that he even got away with this for so long, but I guess now people have finally realized. Is he still posting on his website? He oh he posts on January 21st about bugs. January 15th, January 14th, January 13th of this year. So he's still actually around. He never even left. He's just, just ignoring the allegations now. I wonder what the comments are on these 261 comments. They're not even talking about the allegations. They're actually just talking about the game. They don't even care. Wow. He just got away with it. He straight up got away with it. He's been posting bug updates since every few days he's posting he's posting updates. So this is a post about what he's been doing. This one must have come out around the time the apology came out, right? November 1st, 2023. Oh, maybe this is before. Um, let's see here. Okay, wait, wrong this one. So this was three months ago is when the drama with uh the grooming allegations first came out, I guess. October 6th. And then his bad response. Oh, this is like three weeks ago. Not even that long. January 8th. So he probably posted it early January, his, in, his initial response. He posted this on November 1st, so in between these events, after the DMs came out, before his apology. In October, I started using an online therapy service. I, the first therapist I got matched with wasn't good fit for me, but I feel great about the one I'm speaking to now. I've had four sessions with him so far, and I plan to continue speaking with him for the rest of the year, at the least. For most of my life, I was extremely skeptical about therapy. I wasn't sure what kind of benefit it could provide me. I always thought about therapy I always thought that therapy was just talking about feelings and I'd be better off spending my time trying to proactively solve my problems rather than talking about them. But now that I have firsthand experience with therapy, I think I finally see the value of it. Throughout our conversations, my therapist has made a lot of observations about me that I didn't have the self-awareness to recognize on my own. I won't go into excessive detail, but talking with him has given me a much deeper understanding of how my poor lifestyle choices have impacted my mental health. And more importantly, he's pointed out what steps I need to take in order to get better. So far, each conversation I've had with him has given me a much clearer understanding of how to undo the damage I've done to myself over the years. I'll keep talking with him and taking the advice he's been giving me. Over the past few years, 
years, a lot of people contacted me and said things like, hey, you seem like you need a friend. Want to talk? I always told these people I was busy with work and I didn't have time to chat. I equated the socializing with laziness and weakness and focused my attention on work 100% of the time. Well, despite focusing your attention on work 100% of the time, your game is still not done after 10 years, loser. What's going on? As a result, I never socialized with anyone. There were only one or two people in my life that I would have actually described as a friend. I was incredibly lonely. But over the past month, I've loosened up a bit. These days, if someone reaches out to me and offers their friendship, I'm not so quick to turn them away. You should probably stop just making your only friends on Discord, though. I mean, I know your life is online. I have a lot of online friends, like that's cool, but I also have friends that I just met before this stuff that are more relatable, normal people that aren't like an internet poisoned who I can just hang out with. I think you need some of those people. You also need to not message kids. I'm very cautious at first. I always want to make sure that I'm not talking to a kid or someone with bad intentions, but if they seem like a genuinely nice person, then I actually speak with them instead of just shooing them away. I can't overstate how much of a difference this has made just by me, just by making this one change to my life. I've made a lot of new friends over the past month and I feel like my mental health has improved immensely. This doesn't magically solve everything overnight, but I already feel a lot less lonely and a lot happier than I was before. Well, I mean, that's good, but I don't, I don't know if people should forgive what he did. I don't think they should. I guess it's up to the audience ultimately, but I don't think I don't think this guy is fit for society honestly <laughs> I'd also like to mention that I've recently been leaving my house interacting with people in real life and participating in activities that don't involve the use of a computer I don't want to give out any details or specifics like I go bowling every Sunday since it could lead to safety concerns but I can honestly say that I've been getting out of the house more often and the stepping away from the computer for a while feels a lot better than I thought it would I wonder if this guy's getting recognized in real life a lot I mean he's a pretty he's a pretty recognizable dude no I feel like people probably if they saw him in real life would instantly know it's him that's a crazy look yeah I feel like this I feel like he probably does get recognized in real life I I wonder if he gets if he gets in real life <laughs> for the stuff he's done. I wonder if people confront him. They're like, "You freak! This is our god. This is our goat right here, guys. The most handsome man, eligible bachelor right here." And he talks about game development. If you're at least 18 years old and you want to interact with other adult fans of the game without the presence of children, you're welcome to join our new gilded community. What is a gilded community? Is this a Discord? Gilded.gg? What is this? This is like Roblox or something? I'll continue with my Roblox. Why not? What is gilded? What is a gilded community? Gilded is a whatever this is. Instant messaging and digital distribution platform designed by Gilded and owned by Roblox. Gilded is based in San Okay, so it's basically just, it's just Discord, right? Why isn't he just using Discord? I'm applying to join. Hang out and talk about Yandere Sim. Yes. Will you, oh, wait, okay. So one of the requirements is it says, uh, will you obey the server's rules and avoid discussing drama? So there's like a rule in the server that you can't talk about the weird she's done. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, well, I'll submit my application. I've officially submitted an application to join the Gilded server. I'm about to get groomed. Would you take a selfie with him IRL? Yeah, that'd be pretty funny. And then I would tweet it and be like, this guy's creepy. <laughs> this guy tried to touch me. That'd be pretty funny. I would actually enjoy that quite a bit. It'd be based. Gilded band speedrun isn't as good of a video title as Discord. That's true, but uh, Yandere, D Yandere Dev Discord server speedrun ban. You just lie about the title. That works, right? Clickbait, W Riz clickbait. Groom me, Tom, I'm 25. Sure, big Aaron. We'll, we'll get on that right away, bro right away he's got soulless eyes he kind of does have soulless eyes it looks like there's no there's no happiness or joy or ambition going on behind those eyes just pure pure sadness and be sure to become a member for five dollars a month they get the members only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get thanks so much for your support no